understanding Adobe Photoshop. And today, I want to take a look at one of the great new tools of Photoshop CS5. That is Content Aware Fill, which looks at the image and fills in deleted areas with pixels that are based upon the surrounding area. This is really a cool retouching technique. Plus, there's a couple of other Content Aware tools inside of Photoshop CS5 that I want to use, and we're going to tackle it with a very real-world problem. Let's begin. You see here we've got a picture that has a lot of problems. On the one hand, we have a very attractive young boy. I'm biased. It's my son. And on the other hand, we've got some things we don't want. We've got a little bit of a lawn chair sticking into the beach, and same thing up here, and a woman who just sort of wandered in. Well, we're going to solve this, and we're going to do it with a variety of tools. Let's start out with the Content Aware Fill. Now, to make it easier to see the before and after, I'm going to duplicate this layer by pressing Command-J, and we'll call this Fixed. I'll grab my lasso tool, and I'm just going to make a loose selection around this woman, making sure she is selected. There we go. And I don't have to be that accurate, but I do want to make sure she's included entirely. Looks good. If you need to, you can use the marquee tool to nudge that. And at this point, we're going to fill it. Now, there's lots of ways to access fill. My favorite is the shortcut Shift Delete. Think of it as you want to control or shift what's going into the deleted area. Now, I'm going to use Content Aware Fill, which is going to analyze the surrounding pixels and try to recreate a believable pattern. We'll change this to Content Aware and click OK. Now, depending upon the image, it's either fantastic the first time out or a really good start. In this case, it looks pretty fantastic. Let's zoom in there, and we'll hide the selection, Command-H, and it is virtually impossible to see where it was. Let's turn that back on. I see a little bit of a repeated pattern there, but not much different than over here, and that looks really good. I'm going to press S for Clone Stamp and right bracket to get a bigger brush, and we'll just option click here and brush in a little bit to hide that. Looks great. And I'm just going to come over here. Notice how the brush preview makes it easy to see what's going to happen. And I didn't have to take it. It was a believable bump. I just didn't like it. So already we have removed that woman from the scene with practically no effort whatsoever. Now, the next thing that bothers me is the picture is crooked. I was sitting on a beach chair, so let's fix that. I'll come on over here to the eyedropper tool, and if I click and drag on it, you'll see that there's the ruler tool located within. This allows you to click along a horizon line, like we've done here, and right up in the options bar, you just click straighten, and it will straighten the image for you. Cool thing there, too, is it actually auto-cropped it when it's straightened, so I really like that. It analyzes the image and fixes it. So, when you measure first and then click Straighten, it'll rotate it an arbitrary amount and automatically, intelligently, crop the sides. If you don't want that cropping to occur, just choose Image, Image Rotation, Arbitrary, and it will leave the gap there for you. Now, that's already looking substantially better. We've just about got everything hidden, and what I want to take advantage here is the Spot Healing Brush. Now, the Spot Healing Brush has a great option and it's usually used to remove blemishes. So if I turn that on and I click Content Aware, it's going to analyze the image as we brush. So let's get this a nice big brush here, right bracket, and we'll zoom in on this debris on the beach, and we'll just paint over it. Analyzes the pixels around it and comes up with a believable texture, so we're able to hide some little tiny blemishes. If I want to get rid of something here, like this little piece of garbage, does a nice patch and blends that in with the surrounding pixels. So it's very easy to go through and just paint over what you don't want. And because it's content aware, it does a great job of analyzing the texture and hiding things. Let's see how it does here on this bigger object. It does okay, but if it gets too big, I recommend switching back to the clone stamp and let's just clone this out. We'll click up here. And with the great interactive brush preview there, we could just follow that down and paint that line in. That works really well. 
Looks good. Finish that out. And notice how it's easy to sort of follow the lines as you need to. Once that's done, if you want to make it a little more believable, I recommend grabbing the clone stamp and sample from a few different places. Option click and lower the opacity here. We'll just paint in a little bit of variety. And of course, this is a great opportunity to go back to the spot healing brush and use that content aware to just brush it in and get a little bit of random textures. So see, by brushing over that, it's forcing it into a new texture, which is nice and it makes it a little bit subtle. Let's zoom on out here, looking great. Get rid of this last little bit. We'll just brush that over with the spot healing brush. Did a nice job. There we go. If you need to, you can always round it out and sample. Looks great. And we'll finish this with a nice adjustment. Let's toss on vibrance. And remember, the vibrance adjustment does a great job. It preserves the skin tones while boosting the other colors. So if I were to just bring up vibrance, notice how the ocean gets nice and rich. And the skin is preserved. See, before, after. Very little change in the skin tone. And let's fill that in with a little bit of saturation. That looks great. Now, I'm real happy with this image, but there's one more tool I want to point out that's also content aware, and that is the content aware scale. This lets you scale the image while preserving some of the details. You could choose what those are or automatically use the skin tones. Let's go ahead and just select this layer here, and I'm going to choose Edit Content Aware Scale. Now, I have the ability to click the button up here to protect skin tones. And if it's selected, as I scale, skin tones are going to be ignored. So notice there we can start to stretch, and that's okay. I'm getting a little bit of distortion, though, because he's got shorts on that are not a skin tone. So before I do this content-aware scaling, I recommend making a quick alpha channel. So we'll switch on over to channels, and let's grab a channel here. We'll make a new one and we'll just paint on the area we want to preserve with white. B for brush, and we'll just paint that in. And I just need to get a nice basic selection around them. It's okay to have a little bit of a soft transition zone. There we go. Paint in the area you want to preserve. There we go. And if you're having a hard time seeing it, you can always click that alpha channel and change its color, as well as its opacity, to make it easier to see what you're painting. And I like this view a little bit better. The blue is making it definitely easy to see what I'm fixing. Grab the leg. And that goes on in there. There we go, into the sand. We've got that very accurately defined now. I'll go ahead and leave this area intact. Looks good. If you want, you can always paint with a lower opacity brush to create a transition zone there. I'm just painting with 40% to get a little gradual transition around some of the edges. That'll make it a little bit more subtle. There we go. Got the alpha channel. Notice it's a basic silhouette of the boy. I could turn that off now and select the RGB image. Come back and choose Edit content aware scale, tell it to protect the alpha, and start to scale. And notice that the boy remains untouched while the rest of the scene is transformed. So I can go ahead and pull this out a little bit. That looks great, but the sand texture looks better to me. Press return, and it is done. We've removed the distracting objects with content aware fill. We've tweaked the color with vibrancy and use the spot healing brush and clone tools to touch up any blemishes that weren't wanted. Overall, this is a pretty amazing fix, and it's really tapping into some of that new technology in Photoshop CS5. For understanding Adobe Photoshop, my name's Rich Harrington.